Hello everyone, good morning. I hope you're able to finish that last mouth of cereal and set it down and settle down for this morning's Easter day service. Hope you've got your cup of tea there ready and that you're all relaxed and comfy. Now be honest, are some of you still in your pajamas? Yes, I thought so. To be honest, I was also in my PJs last Sunday when I was watching this service. It's all so different now, isn't it? But at least we can enjoy being cosy at home and we can still come together from all over. And why do we come? Because today, this day, Easter day, is a joyful celebration of the greatest story of love that you will ever hear, of the God who made this whole universe, sending his only precious son to die for us. And we're gonna sing a song now. So everyone, I'd love it for you to get up and we're gonna to sing together, Come People of the Risen King. Well, can I give everybody a really warm welcome to this all age Easter Sunday service. It's brilliant, isn't it? To think this is the day that our Saviour 
rose from the dead. He is risen. He is risen indeed. You know, not being able to visit people that you really love at the moment is really difficult. I'm sure you're finding it difficult. You can't go and see your grand and granddad. You can't go and see some of your family and your friends. It's really, really hard not seeing people that you love. You know, I've got a five month old little granddaughter, Brienne, and I've not been, been able to see her for nearly a month. And I tell you what, it's nearly killing me and my wife. Just to hold her. But I want you to imagine when all this virus stuff is over, you get an invite to the Queen to go to Buckingham Palace. So off you go to the palace with the invite in your hand. You get to the gates, and then when you get there, lo and behold, the gates are closed. You look around, and there's loads of other people. You look carefully, and they don't have an invite, and you do. And then when the police come, you show them your invitation, and in you go. The other people want to go in also, but they can't. They're not allowed because they don't have an invitation. No way. They might try, but unless you've got an invitation, you ain't getting in. Unless, of course, you are a duck. If you want to see the queen, you have to have an invite. That's your ticket to get into the gates. Now, Someone far, far more important than the Queen is God. If you or me want to meet with him, what do we need? I mean, you can't just stroll into Buckingham Palace. Can you just stroll in and see God? Do we need an invite? Or do we need something else? Well, in the next episode, you are going to find out what you need. Welcome back. 
Well, we thought about going to see the Queen, and what did you have to have? You had to have an invitation. You know, for people who lived in the Old Testament, the time before Jesus came to earth, the place they went to meet God was not a palace, but they went to, when they went to meet God, they went to the temple. In the Old Testament, you went to the temple to meet God. Now, of course, every, boys and girls, God was everywhere, for he made everything. But the special place you met him was the temple. And when you went to the temple, actually, within the temple, there was a really, really special place. Does anybody know what that special place in the temple was called? It was called the Holy of Holies. Now, does anyone know how many people were allowed into the Holy of Holies, that special place inside the temple? Anybody know how many people were allowed in there? Actually, only one person, one man, and he was the high priest. And this one man represented all of God's people to God. Now, does anyone know how many times a year this one man was allowed to enter the special place, the Holy of Holies? How many times? Actually, he was only allowed to go into the Holy of Holies on one day every year, the 10th day of the second month. So one man, the high priest, was allowed to go in what, for one time, in one day in the whole year. Now, does anyone know what that day was called? It was called the Day of Atonement. So. One man, on one day, went into the Holy of Holies. But why? Why did he go into the Holy of Holies, the one man, on the one day? Well, to find out, we're going to read a bit of God's Word. It's an Old Testament book called Leviticus. And if you've got your Bibles, turn your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 16. Got your Bibles? Got them open? It's right at the beginning. Leviticus chapter 16. Let me read it. 16 verse 31. On this day of atonement will be made for you to cleanse you. Then before the Lord you will be clean from all your sins. On this day atonement will be made for you to cleanse you. Then before the Lord you will be clean from all your sins. You see, God's people needed to be cleansed. They needed to be cleaned up from all their selfishness, all their sin, all their telling God to shove off. God's people needed to be forgiven. So, how did that happen? The one man, the priest, on the one day, when he went into the Holy of Holies, he would take one lamb, a perfect lamb, a spotless lamb, and then he would kill it. He would shed its blood. It would be sacrificed. Why? Well, you see, the boys and girls, mums and dads, adults, you see, the people deserved to be punished for their sin. For the wages of sin is death. But instead of the people being punished, dying, the lamb, the perfect spotless lamb, died instead of them. The lamb's blood was shed instead of theirs. The lamb died instead of them. Oh, now, one more important thing before I go. Just look at Leviticus chapter 16, and this time look at verse 23. Then Aaron is to go into the tent of meeting, and take off the linen garments he put on before he entered the most holy place. And he is to leave them there. What's that all about? After the sacrifice is made, after the sacrifice is accepted, the priest was to take off his special sacred tunic. If the tunic, when he came out, he would leave it at the door. If the tunic was not there, then the people would be afraid. 
I mean, really, really afraid. Because if the tunic wasn't there, what that would mean was the sacrifice had not been accepted by God. And if the sacrifice had not been accepted by God, then their sins were not forgiven. Now you might be thinking, hey Trev, what has all this got to do with Easter Sunday? What has a Holy of Holies, what has approaching God, what has a lamb's blood being shed? What's the high priest with his special tunic leaving it at the door to show that the sacrifice had or had not been accepted? What's that all got to do with Easter Sunday? Well, keep listening and you'll find out. John chapter 20, verses 1 to 10. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary went down to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had risen from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. The reading we had took us to the tomb in which Jesus was buried. The empty tomb of Jesus. Or was it empty? You see, when Mary arrives, she expects to find Jesus' dead body. But when she looks inside, the body is gone. When she sees this, she instantly, what does she do? She instantly runs to Jesus' best mates, the disciples. And when she tells them, they listen, and they think, No way! No way! And when they hear her story, what do they do? They get their running shoes on and they run as fast as they can to the tomb. And when they get there, lo and behold, everything is just as the lady had said. There's nobody and the tomb is empty. Or is it completely empty? The body of Jesus isn't there, but is it completely empty? Let's read what the Bible says again. John chapter 20 verse 5. He bent over and looked in, looking in at the tomb. He looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. 
Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. Now, is the tomb empty? Yes, the body of Jesus isn't there. But is it completely empty? No, the linen's there. Now, why the linen? Just think back for a moment to the Day of Atonement. What we read in the verses of chapter 16 in the Old Testament. How many people could enter the Holy of Holies? One. How many times a year? One. And what did they have to do? They had to sacrifice one perfect lamb for the people. The lamb dies, the lamb's blood is shed, so that the people can be forgiven, so that the people don't have to die, so the people don't have to be punished, so the people can be saved. And then what does the high priest do when he comes out of the Holy of Holies? What does he do? He takes off his linen tunic. Why? To prove to everybody that he's still alive, to prove to everybody that the sacrifice has been accepted by God. The people were forgiven. The people were free. The people were friends with God. So, was the temple, what was the, what was the tomb empty? Well, yes, Jesus' body was gone because he'd risen, he was alive. But was it completely empty? Well, let's read John 20 again, shall we? He bent over and looked in the strips of linen there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. Now, why the linen? What's it saying? It's saying, boys and girls, mums and dads, Adults, it's saying that Jesus' sacrifice had been accepted by God the Father. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross meant that you and me can be forgiven, that you and me can be free, that you and me can be friends with God. Now that is the best news. Jesus has risen. The linen is there. His sacrifice has been accepted. You and me can be forgiven, can be free can be friends with God. Hallelujah. He's risen. He's risen indeed. Get in.
Thank you for watching our service this morning. Well, let's all be still for a last moment. Let's all stop and close our eyes and let's pray to our Saviour. Lord Jesus, thank you that you chose to die to make it possible for us sinners to know you. Thank you that we can be friends with Jesus and come into the presence of God because Jesus was one man, God's only son, who died for us on one day to make the one way to God possible by taking the punishment for our sins on himself and forgiving us. Amen. And as we move into the rest of our day, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of us this day and forevermore. Amen.